Uh, I'm Michael Casale. I'm Chief Science Officer at Striver. So my background is in the behavioral sciences. I have a PhD in cognitive neuroscience. Since then, I've been doing a lot of work to apply what we know about basic learning and memory functions into different arenas uh, like the behavioral health space. And now at Striver, we're taking those best learning principles uh, and figuring out how to optimize them in the VR training environment, something we have never been able to do in traditional training methods. With many of the current training uh, approaches that are in play right now, it's difficult to know whether or not someone who passes your assessment is actually gonna perform the way you want in the real world. One of the big advantages of using the data that we collect from VR and other immersive technologies is we're gonna get a much more insightful and much more rich data set so that we can better predict what performance is gonna be like in the real world so that you don't have to wait the six months to know if someone's actually ready to be on the floor by sending them through the VR experience, we can start to automatically assess whether or not they're prepared and whether or not they're gonna make an impact uh, positively or negatively uh, on the ROI at the end of the day. So a great example of this is uh, warehouse training that we did, uh, safety training in the warehouse uh, for hazard identifications. And so in this instance, the trainees had to go through and identify all the hazards that were present in the warehouse. Now typically this is done with uh, lecture-based, text-based types of assessments. Um, but in VR, you're actually able to go through and identify the hazards as you would in the real world. What we found was that for those individuals who actually did really well on this text-based assessment of identify the hazards, so in an abstract, conceptual way, uh, they did quite well. But when they actually got in the VR environment, which is our assessment, in the real world, in other words, uh, they performed much worse. So the takeaway there is that there's a strong uh, dissociation between how people will perform in the real world versus how they actually perform in these text-based assessments. Another great example of this is being able to use uh, VR to test for interpersonal skills. And so we had people uh, choose to collaborate with others or not in these virtual environments. Um, as it turns out, the people who chose to collaborate in the VR environments uh, actually chose to collaborate with people in the real world. And those that didn't in the VR environment didn't in the real world. So we're starting to see uh, promising evidence that this is actually a, a tool that can predict real world behavior even in the interpersonal uh, environments. We know a much better way to train and sometimes a critical way to train is to have people actively involved uh, in the training. That means making sure that they are uh, making decisions, getting feedback while they're learning. And that's a much better way to learn. And like I said, sometimes even a critical way to learn. Uh, without that principle, we're often not able to train effectively. And it's usually only through these immersive technologies like VR, where you're making real world decisions and you're getting real world feedback that you're able to train that way.